workshop on info and framework matrices um, or the framework matrix. My name is Dr. Tiffany Monique Bosch. I am the qualitative survey research methodologist for CTRL, so the Center for Teaching, Research, and Learning. And again, welcome. Happy Wednesday. Um, and so, yeah, let's go ahead and dig right into it. Um, I put into the chat the tiny URL for in vivo. Um, I ask that you've already downloaded this. I will not be spending time talking about it. Um, not be, you should be able, should not be getting an error. Did you, Kanika, by chance, did you um, use the URL that was in the email that I sent? Yeah, so I used the tiny URL earlier. Maybe I'll try the one that you just sent. Um, I don't know why. Uh, okay. Issue, I, I'm not, I, I, not a problem. Um, and then if you don't, if you're not able to get into it, like we can try on a separate call. Uh, I just don't want to spend time trying to download in vivo now. Right, of course. Okay. So the agenda for today is our welcome and the session goals. What is in vivo? Getting access to in vivo, which we'll discuss very, very, very briefly. Um, let's make a framework matrix and then also consultations. So our session goals, we're going to be going over, oops, I know it says Qualtrics, but not how to use Qualtrics, but <laughs> it means I meant to say in vivo, um, in vivo and how to create a framework matrix, how to create themes and how for the matrix and how to implement a framework matrix for an example. So this should say in vivo, not make uh, Qualtrics, okay? I just love the dog, that's what it is. Some just housekeeping rules. Everybody is on mute right now. If you have a question, just raise your hand um, or put your question in the chat. I do have the chat up on my computer as well. This form is being recorded and all recordings um, are gonna be available on the CTRL's uh, YouTube channel um, for you to access. So what is in vivo? InVivo is the premier software for qualitative data analysis, so QDA. It's also one of the reasons why people, particularly qualitative researchers, um, will use it to organize, analyze, visualize their data findings and patterns um, that is contained in the data. Getting access to InVivo, you can get access to InVivo by using the tiny URL. So this tiny URL should be working. Um, you should also be able to contact CTRL at American.edu and they will send you an, an installation request. That installation request is they will be sending you the tiny URL. Okay. In vivo is available on Mac or um, and on um, Windows and or on a Mac um, for you to access. The thing is, is that Projects and other in vivo files can be moved between platforms, but in vivo Mac does not have all the functionality that in vivo Windows, ha Windows has. So data can be lost between moving between projects, between moving a project from Windows to a Mac. So just make sure that when you get your license, your license is for that computer and that computer only, um, or that type of computer. Okay, does anybody have any questions about that? Because usually I get a lot of questions about that. Um, I never got a license key even after registering using the form. Not sure what went wrong. So, um, Sagoon, I sent an email out to everybody saying that um, for the license key, but here's the license key information right here. So, okay. So for everybody, it should not say for 14 day trial. Um, you should not be registering for the 14-day trial, but you should be following the directions ex explicitly for the for for you to not for you to not use the 14-day trial. You should not use the 14-day trial. Okay. Before I get into this.
Okay, so Sen Senjun, you said, but you never got an email after. You should have automatically received an email after you put in everything. You need to check your um, spam box, okay? And you need um, to make yeah. sure that you you need to make sure that you register using your um, American.edu account. Yeah, I've done it already. I never got anything. I've been very careful. Um, okay, so, done this so we can figure that out at another time. Um, but it should have automatically come through because it's set up so that it automatically triggers once you get, um, once you register. Okay. So without further ado, what is a framework matrix? Um, framework matrices help you to condense large volumes of interview material into a more manageable quantities and can help you gain insight into familiarity with your data. Framework matrices consist of a grid that has rows for cases or, for example, people you've interviewed in columns for codes. Each cell in the grid represents the intersection of a case and theme. So when you enter the text into the cell, you can create a summary of the content relevant to that case and theme. So I'm going to actually show you not only how to do it, but how, how it will appear in in vivo. So you'll be able to see everything, as I said before, everything about a theme by looking down a column, and I'll show you that column. See everything, every see how um, different themes relate to each other for a particular individual by looking across a row and compare the experiences of different individuals by comparing one row to another. So here's the example that's actually available in um, in vivo. So here we go. With the rows, each row represents a case. In this example, the cases are people. So these are the people right here. So Anna, Frederick, uh, Bernadette, and Mary. So these are their cases. And the row headers can display attributes of the case. In this example, the row headers show the age of the people that you interviewed. So here, Anna is 20, Frederick is 30, uh, Bernadette is 60 plus, and Mary is 60 plus. Does everybody see? the cases that are here. I just want a thumbs up. That helps me know that you're following along. Awesome, thank you. So then you've got your columns. So you've got your rows and then you've got your columns. Each column represents a code. So this is number two. So these are your codes right here. So experiences of volunteer, um, imagining being a college volunteer, meaning as a volunteer. So these are your codes right here, okay? And then right here, associated view, a code by default displays content that is coded by the row, the case. In this example, the associated view is showing Anna's, or Anna's, um, Anna's interview transcript. So you can change that what is displayed in this view. So number three, this is the interview, volunteering experience. This is the interview right here. And all the coded information can actually be, you can actually see it back in here. And then the cells, the individual cells, these cells right here, Each cell is the intersection between a case and a code. For example, the first cell in the matrix contains a, a summarized version of what Anna said about her experiences of volunteering. So this right here, this cell, cell A, is a summary of what has been said in number three. Does everybody see that? Does anybody have any questions about what they're seeing? I do. So sure. who creates the summary? Is this something that the in vivo generates or is this something that the researcher created? So you can actually do both. So you can have an auto summary, which I'll get into later, or you can actually put in the summary yourself. And I'll show you how you can do both. Any other questions?
So just to let you know, cells are blank when summaries um, have when a summary has been created for the intersection between the case and the code. So when you first create the matrix um, in your project, all the cells are empty as you work through the interviews or other files, you will gradually fill in the cells. So it doesn't always, so when you first, before you do with an automatic um, summary, it will be blank. And then when you click automatic summary, it will be filled for you, okay? Does anybody else have any other questions? And if you raise your hand, I can't see you. <laughs> so you can just shout out. Okay, so creating a framework matrix. The first thing we're gonna do is go to, on the Create tab in the Notes group, click Framework Matrix, okay? And then actually, I'm gonna do this in two ways. I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step here, and then I'm gonna actually show you what it looks like, okay? So on the Create tab um, in the Notes group, click Framework Matrix, enter the name of the matrix, and optionally enter a description. On the Rows tab, under Rows, click the select button and then select the cases that will be in the rows for your matrix. And then optional, your row header attributes. So just like your attributes with age, so it could be age, gender, um, age or gender. And then under on the columns, you select columns and then thematic codes that will be in the columns in your matrix, okay? So I'm gonna actually show you how this looks. So we're gonna practice, oops, let me go back. So if you go to your example for the embedded example, um, which is titled sample project multi-method, does everybody see that in there in Vivo? Just a thumbs up or just a yes in the chat will actually be helpful. If not, I can show you. This is it right here. I don't know if you can see it on my screen or not. But the sample multi-method, awesome, thank you. So you're gonna click the sample multi-method. Sample project multi-method, and it's gonna pull it up. And it's just taking its sweet time. All right, so I'm gonna minimize that. And then you're gonna to go to create in a framework located on the top left. And then you'll see the following. So does everybody see this? And I'll show you here, create framework. Fantastic. Oops. So then type um, economy in the general tab. So I'm actually going to type economy four because I've done this a couple of times. And then you're gonna click okay. Oh, you've gotta click our rows. So for our rows, you wanna click people and automatically select descendant codes. So this is what all needs to show up. Interview participants, generations down east, three plus generations down east and all codes and people. So it needs to look like this. And I'll leave this up for a minute, okay? And then just to show you how I did that,
it should look like this. I'm going to try to split my screen for you. Actually, I can't. And then I'm going to click OK. Let me go back. So when you do this, you should only, and I think it's because I've done this a couple of times, you should only have the interview show up, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Interview participants, this should show up right here. And then this should show up. Whereas on my computer, something else is coming up right now. So is this coming up for everybody? It looks like this. Just a yes or a thumbs up? No. Okay, so Darla, what's coming up for you? I'm still pretty much where you were in terms of pressing the cases, the button, the plus button on the left. Okay. So I don't know how many of these to press or just that one plus and then or select all. That's where I'm, I'm stuck. Okay, so what you want to do you don't need all of these to be very honest with you because that's like 85 of these. So what we need is just this. Why is this not doing it? I need it to do it right now. Not places. not codes. Yeah. It happens sometimes. Yes. I don't know why this is not doing what I want it to do. I don't want to hold you up. I just you, no, you no know. problem. But it should what you should be looking at is this. And I just and need to know up. how to get there. So this is what you would click people. Okay. You would click people, dynamic sets, and then these three. And then this should pop up. When you get to here, click interview participants. Okay, thank you. No problem. And then click automatically select descendant codes. And then it should look like this. Keeps doing what it was doing with yours, but that's okay. I I, I have the gist of it out. Okay, complain. no problem. So then from here, we want to hit select, and then we want to click age and gender. And then this screen will look like this. Age and gender will be on your right with the per interview participants on your left. Have I lost anyone so far? Okay. So now we're gonna click on column and select. 
And then from there, we want to include agriculture, fishing, or aquatic culture, jobs, and cost of living, and tourism. So we want to include all of these themes and click OK. And your screen should look like this. All right, so let's go back. So what? who has a screen that they're willing to share? From what they have. And again, I can go back to, I can go back to what I was doing before. Let's go back through the steps one more time, okay? And maybe that'll help with this. And again, just ignore, ignore economy four here. Rows, select. People. Okay, ah, there it is. I don't know why that's doing that. Select. Age and gender. Okay. Columns. Select. You lost me after economy. Okay, so here, after economy, you're gonna click on this plus sign right here. And you're gonna click agriculture, fishing, jobs, and tourism. So June, do you see where I am? Yes. Okay. Awesome, thank you. Great, great. So now I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm going to click OK again. It should pop up. Sometimes an ego takes its time. So you remember I was telling you before that it will show up blank at first. So this is it blank. Okay. So this is Betty right here. And Betty, for the first interview, this is what Betty is saying um, about agriculture. I have kind of mixed feelings about that about that in terms of one thing we see here, we have a lot of foxes trying to live in the little bit of the woods that we have left. We see them on the road all the time when they've been killed. So Betty just goes on and on about the agriculture that's here. And this is how it's associated with Betty. Um, age group, unassigned, gender is female. So you start to see that a lot of these are undefined. Oh, here's one that says 30 to 39, gender, male. Um, so it's, this just helps you tell, this tells you what the person has said or what they marked in a survey, it looks like, okay? But definitely an interview. So now what you're going to do is to click to auto summarize. And I want to go back again. To get these boxes. What you want to do is you're going to click auto summarize. All right. And auto summarize is located right here. 
So I'm going to click auto summarize. circle of life. <laughs> and because it's a bigger set of data and may take a little bit longer, as you can see. So while we're I'm waiting, question in the meanwhile. I'm sorry. Can I ask a question in the meanwhile? Sure. Um, yeah. So just a couple steps back. The one thing I was unclear about was, um, so basically after we enter that economy, but we're selecting rows, right? Like we're selecting cases for rows, or is it columns? So your economy, let me go back to you, back to it for you. Oops. It goes into your column section. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So now that we auto summarize, we have 166 summaries that have been modified. If we scroll up, we can see that this has been auto summarized for us from the interview. If we see something that we like, let's say that, excuse me, let's say that there's something that Betty has said here and I want to type in it. So I can easily click on it and say this. Um, Betty is making a great point about agriculture. I could spell in her town. Now, for jobs about agriculture and So I can easily say something like that here. Um, that's not actually what's being said, but if I wanted to say that, I can say that. You can type in, you can type into it. You can also link what is being said here. So let's say that I wanted to link this. Actually, this to an annotation, open reference. Believe you can do in code and in vivo code selection, and you can actually code it in here to your codes. Okay, so I'm going to pull back up this. So I'm going to, here's this that we were talking about before. And I'm actually going to split my screen, actually. Or try to split my screen. Oh, I can't. But I want to actually show you what this is saying again. So Dorothy is saying, well, I've lived in this area. Well, I've lived in this house since 19, or since 63, I was born and raised in a house next door. I know both of my sets of grandparents were born and raised in this area, and I would have seen their parents, and I would imagine most of them worked in the on the water or farmed. Again, Dorothy, undis or unassigned age group, female, is talking about agriculture. 
Um, but we can also see from Dorothy, there's the transcript that's associated with Dorothy. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about this so far? Tiffany, my question is, does auto summarized just mean cut and paste into the matrix? Yes. Okay. Because all the words look like the original words of the transcript. It's not a summary of the trans. So it's it's just mm -hmm. auto cut and pasted. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And then you can actually you as and I auto summary has its good points and it's not so good points. The good points is that it's auto summarizing for you. Yay. Thank you, technology. The bad point is, is that you need to make sure that what you're reading is associated to that code, if that makes sense. But wouldn't it have already been coded? Like, isn't it taking Dorothy's agriculture coded part of the transcript and just dropping it into the box for Dorothy and agriculture? It has, but I would definitely err on the side of caution. I mean, I think you as the researcher need to make sure that I, I personally don't always trust everything that InVivo does for me. So That's you fair. as a researcher need to go back and make sure that it's doing saying for you what you want it to say. But in order of operations, we would have coded our data and then work on the matrix because the matrix only works when you have cases and codes. Correct. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, should I bold my commentary? Um. Do you mean like like this, Darla? Yes, yes. No, you don't have to bold your commentary. But there is a way for you to link your commentary to what's being said here, but I'm not going to show you that today. But there is a beauty called, um, you can definitely export your information onto an Excel file for your readability. So let's say that you don't want to look at it from the screen. You can easily export that and I can show you how that's done. So, ooh, I was gonna show you how it's done. Yeah, I don't wanna take you away from- No, um, it's okay. So here you can export Framework Matrix and Economy Four. So that's my that's my entire Excel form. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, So right here, you can generate summaries of themes and connect it to a text by highlighting the quote and type summary in the theme box and click right click and click the new summary link. So, oops. This should have highlighted, but I don't know why it's not highlighting again. Of course, when I need something to happen, it's not highlighting for me. So you should be able to click here and link the two by clicking new summary link, but I'm not really sure why it's not linking, why it's not showing up right this minute. Again, I've done this a couple of times at this point. And so it could just be the fact that it's reading it as, oh, you've done this so many times. Um, So we've got some previously recorded. Again, I wrote Qualtrics by mistake. I was doing Qualtrics and InVivo at the same time. We've got some previously um, downloaded sessions on InVivo, not Qualtrics. Um, but we do have stuff on Qualtrics. If you're interested, um, InVivo license, download, um, creating documents, importing sources, creating codes, and code date coding data. How to run a query for words, for a word cloud, creating nodes from a query, and matrix coding. Um, Videos can be found here. So that's on the edspace.american.edu CTRL 
software workshops page. I would strongly suggest you do that. Um, there's also this particular video, if you're looking for in vivo 12 framework matrix, just ignore the fact that, um, just ignore the fact that it says in vivo 12. Um, you can, you can definitely just use that information there and use, and just go and sorry, you can use the information there and apply it to in vivo um, 14, which is what we have. Okay. Um, you can book a consultation with me at any time by using the QR code or by going through the consultations. Okay. Um, the questions in the in the chat right now, should we be working with in vivo 12 or in vivo 14? You should be working with in vivo 14. You should be working with the ones that we have for the tiny URL. You can use 13 or 14, um, but you can use some of the videos from either us or Temple University or I think it's whole college, H-U-L-L -L, or whole university. I can't remember right now off the top of my head. You can, um, they're in vivo 12. So it's same, the same, pretty much the same platform. Thank you, Robin. The videos are, we do try to make the videos very helpful. Okay. Um, but I want to make sure that I answer any additional questions for you. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now and then try to answer additional questions that you may have regarding what we just did with the matrices. Because I want to make, you know, we have a lot of time and I went through it. And it can, now I can answer some of those installation questions if you are still stuck. Tiffany, real quick question. Will you have the- Oh, I can't hear you. Is, can you hear me better now? A little bit, Robin. Okay, I'll put it in the chat. Okay. And then um, does anybody else have an installation question? We might as well just try to knock those out while we're here. Yes, we'll be sending uh, the recording. You can be able to, you should be able to access that. Lindsay, I'm looking at you right now, recording for the video. Yeah, well, I'll um, have it downloaded and then uploaded to our archive page uh, by the end of today. And I'll put that link in the chat. And then what I will also do is um, just like I sent an email out to everybody with, um, with, with saying, hey, like follow these directions for downloading in vivo. I will also send out a copy of the slides as well. So. So is there any, if it means that we have to go back through, I don't mind going back through the matrices as well, trying to make sure that you get your matrix up and running. Thank you, Victoria, for putting the archives page there. Okay, so Meredith, do you, you want to show me your screen? Hi there. Let me see if I can share my screen. Hang on a second. Okay. Uh, one right. second, Meredith, I'll make you a co-host. Sorry, meeting lunch. <laughs> um, now you should be able to share your screen. Okay, I tried this okay. sometimes relentlessly and I didn't want to jump in and disrupt the meeting. But no it kept giving me an activation code and it didn't work. I tried so, in 14. Right, so what you want to do is go to provide enterprise key to activate. Now in the email, I sent you an activation code. Okay, let me get that. Uh, okay, let's see. And then share your screen again. Okay, hang on. And you should just be able to copy and paste. Oh, okay. 
And then you need to click, I agree, scroll all the way down, scroll down, click next. Yep, so put in first name, last name, email address, and then country. Oh, your American is not correct. Oh, sorry. I was trying to go too fast. <laughs> You're welcome, Brett. Anytime. Then activate. And then click activate. Yep. And now your key, your license has been activated. Okay. And, and then um, put in your initials. And then click OK. It just takes a while for it to. And there you go. Whatever you do, do not click login because your license key is your login. Okay. okay. So I can just go here when yep. I get ready to use it. Okay. Yep. All Great. right. So, all right. And can you put the video links in the chat? You had a slide. Um, the, video, the links are already in the chat. Oh, they are? Yes. Okay. Great. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much. You're welcome. Can I answer any other questions for anybody? Kanika, did you want to try to um, get you online for in vivo? That would be awesome if you have a second, but yeah, of course. I just wanted to make sure we got through the framework first. No, for sure. I, I don't know if it's just a, an issue with um space, but it, it does say that the Mac doesn't have, um, it, I don't think it is because it says the Mac doesn't have, or the software is not, um, I, I, the software cannot be downloaded on the Mac sort of deal. Oh, I think so. Yeah, so I've seen that before, that error before. So that you need to go into your system mm -hmm. and allow the program to, it's a, it's in a system you need to allow your program, the allow in vivo to have access to your system. Oh, I see. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody else? Well, thank you, everybody. And please make sure that you fill out the survey, okay? Great. Thanks, Tiffany. Anytime. Thank you. Bye. Bye.